Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word, and I'm welcoming myself back into Daily Devotions. Thank you for that uh, pause uh, kind of after Easter. It's actually a time where we could ratchet it up and being able to know uh, being in the Word of God, uh, uh, being countered by the Word of God because He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so as we continue to travel in God's Word, I said to you, all the way back before Lent, that we would finish it up. We went all the way through Proverbs chapter 23, and then I don't want to just leave you hanging in these last chapters of Proverbs. And I know it's a little bit tough to pick back up, so maybe a little bit of homework and go back to those um, other videos and kind of walk forward in this way, but I'll try to catch us up uh, real quickly just right now. Three concepts of the Proverbs. Three concepts of the Proverbs as I see um, as they continue to walk forth. And that is, uh, one, being knowledge, knowing the Lord. Not just knowing Him and like uh, in knowing Him in creation, knowing Him in our minds, but actually knowing the saving knowledge of the Lord. He is salvation. Number two uh, concept of the Proverbs is discipline. Of being able to actually act wisely. And this is really coming out of our serving challenge over Lent and into that Easter time and being able to know that we can actually walk with the Lord as he is walking before us, to act wisely, to serve him by serving others. And then concept number three for our Proverbs is to grow, to grow in wisdom. And that's really where we are in the book of Proverbs as we get to have this. Chapter 24, we're right in the middle, right in the middle um, of these wise sayings. Chapter 22 and 23 speak towards this wise saying of how do I act towards my neighbor? And now we're in the midst of uh, words, and you'll find them, because it says my son quite often, uh, but you'll find these words of kind of fatherly advice. A father to a child of how do I act wisely? How do I walk in this world? What can my eyes be open to? And what can my eyes be shut to um, as well? What can I steer away from so that that discipline or that uh, encounter doesn't actually trip me from wisdom walking with the Lord? So Proverbs chapter 24. We're right in the middle of these wise sayings. There's 29, uh, I guess there's 30 wise sayings throughout these last couple chapters. We're on wise saying number 18 in that verse, uh, first verse of chapter 24. Here we go. 24 verse 1. Do not envy wicked men. Do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence and their lips talk about making trouble. Bad company brings about corruption. (laughs) That's really what that's speaking to. Be careful. Don't envy wicked men. Don't see their success and and being able for that short season be tempted to go that way. Don't desire their company because violence and, as it says here, trouble is in their path. Verse 3, saying, why saying 19? By wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. What is your foundation? Knowing the salvation of the Lord, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that's how a house is built. Why saying number 20, verse 5? A wise man has great power, and a man of knowledge increases strength. For waging war, you need guidance, and for victory, many advisors. It is a beautiful thing to have a council of company around you, wise counsel. Wise saying number 21, verse 7, wisdom is too high for a fool. In the assembly at the gate, he has nothing to say. He doesn't bring anything to society, this fool, and its wisdom is too high. It's not something he can just think that he can achieve, something that is given the wisdom, knowledge of the Lord. Why saying number 22, verse 8, he who plots evil will be known as a schemer. 
why saying number 23, the schemes of folly are sin and men detest a mocker. Why saying number 24, if you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay each person according to what he has done? Don't give an excuse of didn't know. You should step towards, as it says. Um, if you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? Lean on, it goes back to that Proverbs uh, 3, right? Lean on not your understanding, but his understanding. God knows all. Why saying number 25, verse 13, it says, Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, there is future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. What a great gospel this is. Just like you would eat honey from a comb, so too. Wisdom is so sweet for our soul that actually gives us the enjoyment, gives us that hope, that certainty of being able to go forth with the Lord. Why is saying number 26, verse 15, Do not lie in wait like an outlaw against a righteous man's house. Do not raid his dwelling place, for though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. But the wicked are brought down by calamity. Why is saying number 27, Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from him. Why is saying number 28, Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of the wicked, for the evil man has no future hope, and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. Do not fret because maybe in this season you're seeing them do great things and succeed or whatever that may look like. They don't have a future. You have a future in the fear and the wisdom of the Lord. And it comes back to this wise saying, number 29 and verse 21, Fear the Lord and the King, my son, and do not join with the rebellious, for those two will send sudden destruction upon them. And who knows what calamities they can bring. Be careful. Make sure that the people that are put in place over you are respected by you. It goes on to further sayings of the wise. And it says very pointedly in verse 23, these are also sayings of the wise. To show partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the guilty, you are innocent, Peoples will curse him and nations denounce him. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and rich blessing will come upon them. Honesty. Truth. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. I need to have an income. <laughs> Do not testify against your neighbor without cause, or use your lips to deceive. Do not say, I'll do to him as he has done to me. I'll pay that man back for what he did. Revenge, never the route. Verse 30, I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of a man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. It's good to do the work. Not to be a slugger or to be lazy, but as we've come out of this Lent time, to be able to serve God by serving others. Serve others because God has served us. And so it's wise. It's, there's much wisdom in doing work, in having hope, and not aligning ourselves with the wicked or the seasonable success, but rather just walking in the way of the Lord. And his way is he's going before you, paving a path before you, as Jesus said after his resurrection. And he goes before you, and he opens up the opportunities. And so that's where we pray this day. Holy Spirit, open up my eyes to the opportunities that Jesus is setting before me to be able to walk in the knowledge, in the truth, and the love 
of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day.